But this is what I want to concentrate on today um, more than anything. And uh, Benita specifically asked me to make sure I talk about this. So I think some patients don't know um, that sun exposure makes dermatomyositis flare or worsen. And so it can make it more difficult to control in the future. And it can just make it more difficult, you know, right there. Um, and it can make people need more treatment. So needing a boost of steroids because their skin's so bad, or we can't get it under control and we have to change their treatments. Um, so if you don't walk away but anything else today, my message is sun protection, sun protection. And I'm going to kind of go through some things um, that we can do. Sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. So I tell all my patients, I want an SPF of at least 30. So 30 or greater. Okay. And the biggest thing is I want you to use th three fingers and goop it on there and, and use it. Okay. You should be going through, if you're out in the sun, you know, if you're using sunscreen, even just a couple times a week, you should be going through a tube this big in a month at least. Um, so people who've had sunscreen, oh, for two years, three years, you're not using enough of it. There's lots of different ingredients in sunscreens. People with connective tissue disease, so lupus, dermatomyositis, often do better with the physical blockers. So that would be zinc oxide and titanium oxide. And so those are usually labeled physical blockers, sensitive skin, or what we call like baby sunscreen. So all those um, usually have zinc in them or titanium in them. Of note, just a little pharmaceutical trick or company trick, they often charge, charge more for the baby. And it's usually the same as some other product. So, um, you know, you don't have to go for the baby and people who have kids, um, they usually charge more for baby soap, baby sunscreen. So um, just a little tip, you don't have to spend that money. But one thing that I want to bring up that's kind of a newer thing is zinc. Uh, I'm sorry, iron. So iron is an ingredient found in the tinted moisturizers. I'm going to show some examples of that. So it looks like there's some questions in the chat. So let me get this for a second. Does sun affect you immediately or can it take three days? Can it show up just as skin or also as muscle pain? Um, that's a good, great question, Mary. Um, both. Yes, yes, and yes. Um, so it can show up immediately. Some people say it burns right away and they're uncomfortable right away. Some people don't notice it right away. And it's even almost a week or two later. And they're like, why am I so much worse? And I say, well, what have you been doing the past couple of weeks? And they'll say, oh, I went to the beach a couple of weeks ago. Um, so that's something it doesn't have to be immediate. Um, can it be skin issues or also is muscle pain? So that's a good question. It can make your disease flare. So if you have muscle disease, then it can definitely um, cause muscle pain. All right, next question. I'm half Persian and like my brothers have lots of body hair. Yes, it's so hard to get their lotion applied while on the skin. Do you think hair removal? Um, okay, that's a great question. Um, my husband will kill me, but my husband is also very hairy. So we have this problem on a day-to-day -day basis in our home. So I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so... A lot of people who have a lot of hair like the sprays. Um, I'm fine with the sprays as long as you rub it in afterwards. So the thing with the spray is, you know, you're spraying half of it. If you ever watch somebody do spray, half of it's blown away in the wind. Um, so make sure that you really spray it on there and rub it in. But a lot of people like the sprays. Now that is harder to find with the physical blockers. Um, so you are right about that. You know, do you want to do hair removal just for sunscreen? I mean, that's your choice. It's hair, laser hair removal is quite expensive. Um, but I think you can um, try to work around it and save some money first. Uh, Dr. Griffin, this is Jerry. Um, and if I could, um, I also, I, I'm not, I don't have a ton of body hair, but enough that makes it difficult. And I use trimmers and I just shave my, my stomach and <clears throat> wherever it needs to be done you know, once a week. And it's, I seem to do okay doing it that way. So I don't know if that's something that might help. That's a great recommendation. Thank you. One thing to keep in mind is, um, you know, you could ask your doctor to check your vitamin D level. We often suggest in dermatology to get your vitamin D through nutrition, um, but that can be hard um, depending on your diet. Um, so 
you can ask your doctor about um, vitamin D supplementation or to check your vitamin D levels. All right, so here's some examples. And I try to get some examples of different pricing just to kind of get the, the whole audience. Um, Kula is a, kind of a newer brand that I really like. Um, they have creams, they have um, sticks, they have lip balm. So I think one of the questions was for lip balm. I love their lip, their lip SPF and they're tinted too. So for the, they have untinted and tinted. So, um, you know, for the men or women, if you want, you know, to look like you have lipstick on versus not look like you have lipstick on. Um, but then here I'm highlighting the iron oxide. So this is the ingredient in, in the tinted, which we think helps with dispigmentation, the darkening, you know, kind of like that color, you know, if you get darkening, that's darker than your skin, kind of that, what, you know, like mottled or almost muddy look, um, the tinted can help with that. CeraVe, so the cool is a little more expensive. CeraVe um, in general is much less expensive. And um, I've just got the iron oxide highlighted here. As you can see, it's an ingredient pretty low down. Um, and then here's some more um, with zinc. Um, somebody asked who they have sensitive skin. I don't know if you've tried the um, Alta MD, but a lot of people like these that are really have really sensitive skin. Is a 30 SPF uh, enough? Is there a benefit of going to those new like 100s, 110? I think I've even seen. Yeah, so that's a good question. So yes and no. You have to, the numbers or if you apply it properly. Um, and most people don't. As I was saying, you need to be using a good amount, reapplying every two hours, reapplying after you do your aqua therapy or if you're sweating or in the water, in the pool, in the beach, anything like that. So you need to be replying a lot. Um, somebody said, oh, Benita said she likes Neutrogena. I like Neutrogena too. Um, and it's it's definitely on the less expensive side, which I like that. Um, Alta is a little more expensive, but people really like it if they struggle with finding a good sunscreen. So the next thing, um, somebody, uh, Benita mentioned that some people had asked this. So um, I'm not going to delve deeply into this, but there have been some reports of sunscreen causing a specific type of hair loss. And that hair loss is called frontal fibrosing alopecia. That is this very specific type of hair loss that usually is not what dermatomyositis patients have. Now, could you have both? It's possible. So I would definitely recommend having a dermatologist evaluate your hair loss. Um, if you're inquiring about that, because I, um, you know, it was mentioned if you've had eyebrow loss and hair loss, but it's a specific type of hair loss um, that's different than connective tissue disease hair loss. Oh, somebody's asking about Helicare. Um, so I love Heliacare. Um, Heliacare is a supplement. Um, it comes in like this yellow box. You can get it over the counter that helps with sun sensitivity. There have been some small reports that it has helped. Anybody, I think somebody else said that they have lupus too. Um, Plaquenil also helps with um, sun sensitivity, um, but Heliacare can work. I haven't used it in a lot of my dermatomyositis patients, um, but I've had success with it with some other patients. So that's a great question. And it's pretty harmless. Um, the, the biggest thing is it's not cheap. It's about a dollar of pills. So that can kind of add up when you're paying for a lot of other medicines, um, but I do like it. So sun protective clothing. Um, so UPF is what you'll see instead of SPF. The UPF is for the clothes. So it's ultraviolet protective factor. So normal clothes, like a white t-shirt or just like a normal t-shirt has a UPF of about 10. Um, so recommended UPF for clothes is again, over 30. Um, and the higher the number, so I guess I, I kind of didn't answer the question as much about the SPF, but the higher the number used correctly, the more it blocks the sun. Um, so UPF clothing comes in shirts, pants, dresses, hats, shorts. So it's awesome. I've always been a fan of sun protective clothing, but now I'm a true believer because I have young kids and I make them wear their sun shirts and I put, I'm diligent about sunscreen and their neck always gets more burnt than their back because that shirt just works better than the sunscreen. Um, so I'm a big fan of sun protective clothing. Um, here are just some examples. Wide brim hat. Okay. Baseball hats better than nothing, but a wide brim hat protects your ears 
And some people with dermatomyositis can get really bad ears. I'm not sure if anybody on this call has that, um, but you can get that. Um, so that can be really um, uncomfortable and hard to treat. Um, the, you know, if people who like to garden and do yard work, a lot of times you're leaning over a lot. So this neck cover is really good because, you know, a hat, if you're leaning over, still doesn't get your neck. So I like this. And then these gloves can um, do sun protection if you're in the car a lot. Um, that kind of thing, because you do get sun um, through your car. You can get window tinting for your car. Um, so every state is different. Um, and every state has a certain like number, percent tint you can get. But then, so this is Alabama, because I live in Alabama, but you can literally Google whatever state you live in, you know, California, um, DMV tinted windows, and you should be able to find their regulations. So this one's Alabama and it says you may apply for an exemption and you just need a letter from your physician. So I write this letter all the time. Any, anytime anybody asks, I'll write the letter if they have anything that causes sun sensitivity and it allows them to get darker tinting um, for their car if they're in the car a lot or even if they're not in the car a lot, um, just to give them a little bit more protection from the sun. Again, different states are different, but, you know, in Alabama, you must display, um, you know, a sticker so that you don't get pulled over because you're darker tints because you it is something that would get you pulled over in certain states. All right. Any questions about sun protection before I move to kind of itch and dry and skin care? I would uh, I guess I would just like to to remind people something that I was reminded a long time ago with sun protection and using umbrellas. <coughs> Excuse me. And the fact that, you know, the sun bounces up, you know, into your face. So even though you may be sitting under an umbrella thinking that you have some shade, if you have concrete around or sand around, that sun bounces right back up those rays and right at your face. So I always like to re remind people of that. Yes. Thank you for that reminder. I actually meant to say that and then I forgot. Um, yes. So sun bounces off the water. It bounces off concrete. It bounces off sand. Um, so you're exactly right. Just being in the shade doesn't protect you from the sun. You still need to wear your sunscreen, still need to wear your clothes and sunglasses. Yes, yes. Especially big ones who people for people who have, um, you know, the eyelid rash 